this show. We have LA Zone joining me right here on the show tonight for Sports and Hip Hop with DJ Mad Max, Light 365, iHeartRadio. It goes by the name of Trilly. Trilly, what's going on, man? Welcome to the show. How's everything going? How's your holiday weekend? How's your Monday? How's everything? Everything's good. I'm right here at my family house right now. We're doing like a little barbecue right now. So we're enjoying the uh, Memorial Day weekend. No breaks. No breaks at all, man. But I was talking with Julius, and shout out to Julius before we get into you guys meeting and working together. You have an upcoming single. When do you plan on releasing it, and it what's it going to be like? Released on the 27th. Oh, it's released on the 27th? Yeah, it just came out, yep. It just came out. Congratulations to you. And what's the title of that for the people that are tuning in right now to go check that out? Uh, it's called All Booty. All booty. Okay, yeah, I came across that. There we go. That's the single right there. Shout out to you. That's a new song. But you've been working for a minute now. You started during the pandemic around that time, and you knew this guy, LJ. I was doing my research who worked at Capitol Records. He also did Iggy Azalea's album, Mm -hmm. and you told him that you were going to pull up to the studio. You went to the studio. He heard you rap, and he said, you can do it. Exactly. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That was, like, the first experience I ever did. I actually, like, doing a record, and then, like, I did that record. And then I was just like, fuck it. And then it took like another six, seven months. And I started working with another guy. Then I started getting the hang of it. Then, you know, went from there. You were playing overseas in Spain because you originally wanted to be a pro basketball player. How was that experience of playing overseas in Spain? It was too, it was pretty dope. It was pretty dope. I played basketball all my life. So like, you know, that's what I really wanted to do. And then it got to a point where it was like, I want to be my own boss and like do my own shit. So, you know, that didn't really, uh, I just stopped doing that. You didn't want to be on other people's time and you had to be there yeah. at that place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, but I still play, you know, to this day, like all the leagues out here, like Drew League and all the stuff like that. I still play in them when I get a chance to. Well, Do you ever see yourself taking like a J. Cole approach because now he's off playing in a professional league? Oh, definitely. Definitely. When I get to a um, certain point in my career, that I feel like, you know what, I don't have to really do this as much. I'm already established so I could branch off and do other things. Yeah, for sure. I know that the, that you changed into hip hop. Was this something that you were always interested in, in just as like a backup plan when you were younger? When did hip hop really come to the point of you wanting to do this as a career besides making it official in 2020, 2019? Uh, I always liked music, but I never really thought like I would be a rapper or nothing. Like, I just know I always had like a, a type of dope ass lifestyle. So I never thought I was like, okay, I'm a rap, but you know, it actually played out. Did you try any time before then recording records or writing rhymes? Or this that was it, yeah, just going in that first, studio. That was, yeah, that was literally the first time I never ever. I always told myself that I was like, man, like I don't think I could freestyle. I don't think I could really write either. So like I've never really like I just really liked music, but I never really attempted to do any of those things though. You started building up your network too. How did that begin? Because once you become a rapper, it's all about making connections and getting out there, getting seen. Yeah. So um, like I said. I'm originally from, you know, Los Angeles. So uh, I already had like a lot of people that I knew, you know, and I was respected in the industry. So like, I was always outside, you know? So me being outside and when I started rapping, people didn't really think that I was like serious. They're like, oh, he just playing around. Like this nigga joking, you know? Then they really start seeing me actually putting my money and investing my time into it. And we're like, okay, this shit is pretty dope. And we could tell that just from the records out there and, and you getting linked up with Davido, that was pretty much easy. It was just a phone call away and you already were familiar with his people and he was already out in LA. You went out to Sherman Oaks and did the video at the mansion. Yeah, that was definitely, that was definitely dope. Uh, him being Nigerian like me. So that was a, a very, a big stepping stone for me. And then like, you know, showed that my family that, okay, yeah, this is, must be serious as what you're doing, you know? Cause before, like, you know, you tell, you know, your parents, oh, I want to be a rapper. I'm rapper. They like, man, go get a job. You know what I'm saying? That ain't, they don't believe that shit is real with them when I touched and did the video with him, they were like, you know, then they had like our family calling them from back home and all type of stuff. So they're like, Oh, oh, this shit is real. Like, okay, keep it up. You know? How did you go about building your own record label? Because you're the CEO of your own label, trillion dollar records. Uh, Like I said, I always wanted to be my own boss. Yeah. So, you know, when I started doing the music shit, that's how I created the brand. And then, you know, everything just fell in after that, you know? So now when I record or I do other things and, you know, I, put my homies on, bring them on. So, you know, we could all uh, get it together. Do you plan on signing on any other artists to that label? Definitely. Definitely. Like, um, I have some of my homeboys that, that, you know, we rock out, but they're not officially like signed yet. You know, I'm letting them make their own choice if that's what they want to do. Cause I don't want to like sign them and I'm not where I want to be. Cause I don't want to 
you know, hold them back. You know what I'm saying? I'm still trying to figure out this myself also. But once I get a hang of it, definitely, you know, I got to bring as many people I can along. You, you've spoken about it in the past that in order for L.A. to stamp you, you have to go to another place to get stamped first. Was there another place that you got stamped first? Was it back in your home country? Uh, I feel like, yeah, I got stamped in my home country. Yeah. Of course, there were the ones that was rocking with me first. The problem in L.A. is, you know, nobody wants to stamp nobody until somebody else, else stamps, you know, then they be like, oh, yeah, like I, I been knew this dude was going to do it. Da, da, da. So, you know, just I feel like it just everything, everybody comes to L.A. to do everything and try to make it. So I feel like it's just a harder place to actually get there. You know, some people get lucky and get there. And some people it takes them a longer process to get there. But we there, though, so. If there's an artist listening out there right now, would you say, say if they're not really getting any looks out, say if they're in New York or if they're in Atlanta and they're not getting any looks, would you recommend them to come out to L.A.? Would it be a life changing experience for them to start making connections out there? Uh, I feel like L.A., of course, is a, a lot of connections, but it's if you if you think about it, it's a lot of cities that are not a mainstream city and they're like blown up like a lot of Detroit rappers are killing the game right now. You that's know right. what I'm saying? Like, so that's the thing. I feel like once you create your own wave, and you start your own wave, then that's when all the people are going to chime in. You're right. And, and Detroit's making some noise out there. It's, and one in particular that you were working with is Sada, baby. Yeah. Connection with him. Yeah, definitely. He was he was pretty dope. Like, he wasn't like a lot of artists that be like, hella, like, think they too cool, or whatever the situation is. Like, we did it. We did. We made the song, shot the video right there on the spot in the studio. He showed love. He was like, yeah, man, anytime you want me to post it, I'll post it, you know? I want a lot of artists out there, like, cause what I thought was I got money. So I'm like, all right, when I start doing music, I'm just gonna get a feature from this person, this person, this person, I'm good. But it don't work like that. It's better to have a genuine connection with these people before you just throwing out money. Because at that point, it's like, they're not, they don't give a fuck if you win or lose. They just come to collect the money and keep it pushing. They might not even post it. So if a nigga posts your song one time, that don't do nothing, you know what I'm saying? like. If nobody hears your music, then you can't get nowhere. So I feel like it's better when you've been a genuine connection because then when you do that, then it's like, okay, now they want you to also succeed with them too. So now they might put you on a record with them or they might fuck with you on different type of bases, you know? So I feel like that's the best thing, really. It's rare to find genuine people in this industry. It's very cutthroat and fake. Who are some people that have been real genuine so far in the start of your career? Um... Uh, like I said, when I met Solid Baby, he was pretty dope. Um, uh, a couple other artists that I worked with that was pretty dope. Kayla Pharrell was pretty dope. Um, DeVito was pretty dope. Um, I did a song with Tory Lanez. You know, he's pretty dope. Um, uh, another one of my um, my boys, TLs, he worked with like Little Kim and other people like that. He's another person that um got me going and helped me out with this career too. He's pretty dope. Everybody, you know, those are the people that I feel like that I worked with that, you know, showed me love. And you're doing that right now. Any label talks, any major label talks with Trillion Dollar Entertainment? Uh Trillion Dollar Records. Really not, not, not. We have we have one that, you know, I can't really speak on it like that, but like, you know, we're seeing what's up with that right now. You know, like I said, it just gotta make sense. Um yeah, like I said, it just LA is it's pretty different, you know. I also worked with Joe Moses. I did a record with him. He's he's dope too. You know, gave me a lot of knowledge. You know, he told me a lot about the game. You know, um, but yeah, that's about it though. I feel like anybody in LA needs to just get their shit going and then you know go from there. Upcoming album, you got the new single out already. Yeah, I got a new single right now. I feel like all my records that I've been doing the past couple of months, they're all like single record so everybody like drop a mixtape drop a mixtape but it's kind of hard for me because i'm like i don't know i feel like i don't want to put all my shit in a bunch unless i get that major label support where like okay if he released all this hot shit then everybody gonna hear it you know and i'm also like you know i do afro beats too so you know i do i do uh rap i do afro beats so you know mixing that shit together is dope we don't have nobody really doing that you know with the Afro beats, that was actually the first time with you testing that was with Davido. Mm-hmm. It, how was that experience being that for the first time, something new? Yeah, that was pretty dope. You know, it didn't, like I said, it, it, it helped me work on other records like that. You know, seeing like how I could better off of it or, you know, how I could make changes and do things like that. So 
that definitely um played a factor in in the music I create. Now every time I if I make like a rap song, I'll make sure I throw an Afrobeat record in there too, also. Cause like, you know, I just came back from Nigeria and I shot one of my videos out there. So that was pretty dope doing that. Dope. You got some great things on the way here. You got 100, 150 songs in the stash. Julius is helping you out with that. I did my research. When did you guys link up originally? You and Julius Darrington. Shout uh, out to Julius. Yeah, shout out to Julius. Uh, definitely. Um, I met him through my board TLs. Uh, they, he uh, introduced me to him. Uh, you know, it took us a while to get going, but we got going. And um, he's helping me with this um, PR for this record right now. So, you know, we got a lot of things tied in. He laced me and you with this interview, so he's definitely doing a, a good job of what he's doing, him and his team, you know. He's supposed to be doing a New York PR run uh, next month, so hopefully we get that going and, you know. For sure. It, does he help you out on the a r side? Because he's, he's an a r as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. He's not a PR, I'm saying he's connecting me with the PRs and everything mm. like that, so yeah, definitely. He he actually picked this record for us to drop, like, you know, he, he was, we were all in the room and we're like, what record? And it was crazy because we we picked a rec a record originally as a record called Cry Baby, and then he brought um, Noise Beats to the um, to the studio session, and then he played a beat and we were like, okay, yeah, this beat. And then I went in there and I did it. And was like, okay, yeah, this is the song we're gonna push this song like. So like you immediately changed it and you know it was a great record that we picked. So definitely. How important are A and R to the artists because. A&Rs are never brought up or given their praise because they help out artists creatively and getting them in the right mind space. How important is having an now, A&R? Not in only that, they actually, their, their connections also too. So you got artists is that like, maybe like you want to call them like, everybody's different. You got, you know, some people that are cocky, some people that are laid back, some people that are just humble. So you got to remember if everybody, if every artist was just cocky and there was no A&Rs, then it's like, okay, how would these people be able to branch off with other people? So yeah, A and Rs are definitely a um a big thing that needs to be talked about. Also, like producers too. I feel like producers and and engineers they don't get enough credit either. You know, they just sit there and make the song and that's it. You know, they don't get enough credit. You need to, I guess they all need to you know get their flowers now. You know, because without them we won't be able to make the music that we do. Do you have any certain producers that you have under Trillion Dollar Records? Not under my label, but I would love to get them under my label. But it's a couple of them that I worked with. Um, I work with my dude, my guy named Telly, TLs. He's also an engineer. He's also with us all the shit. He does all of it. So them two, Noise, he makes great beats. Um, a lot of, you know, um, engineers and producers that I work with, you know. I love to work with all of them, really, you know, but, you know, they all be busy. You're doing big things. What's next for you, man, that we didn't mention here in this interview? I know you got uh, all the single records out. Everyone's asking for the mixtape. We already addressed that, but what's next for you? The visual. Next, I'm trying to, yeah, the next is I'm trying to go on this tour right now. Um, the Vito's doing a tour next month. So I'm trying to see if I could put that together and get on tour with him. That'll be a, a great thing to do, you know? So I'm just trying to get out there more because I feel like once I get my foot in the door, it's a wrap because I got great music. You know, I got great visuals. I got, you know, I'm a person that people wants to see and they have to see. So I just got to get my foot through the door. You know, we figuring that out right now. You also do a lot of for charity. You did a Christmas toy drive recently yeah. when, when Christmas passed. You have any upcoming charity work? Yeah. Um, so right now I've been just doing like tour drives for Christmas. Um, so this, this was my second annual tour drive this year that just passed. We did like a, a celebrity football game. So I had a couple of like my NFL players come out. Like I had Chris Matthews, shout out to him. He played for the Seahawks. He came to show love. Akeem Irons, he came. He played for the Patriots, Super Bowl champion. He came to show love. Kalen for real. He came and showed love. Like, you know, but of course, Twin Dollar Records, we took the we took the uh, trophy home, you know. But uh, it was it was a great great turnout. Uh, wonderful food, had music, we had football, we had toys, everything. So every year, you know, I just try to do something, you know, that I can um, I can do. I love the kids. I don't have no kids myself, but. I have nieces and nephews, you know, I try to do as much as I can for, you know, the kids because I know it's hard out here. Mm -hmm. Now, what inspired you to do all this charity work out here? Was it something that your parents instilled in you as a young Yeah, kid? like growing up, you know, me being from Nigeria and, you know, um, growing up, I used to always see my mom working hard and like sending money back home and stuff like that. And I used to be like, man, why are you giving these people our money, man? Like, 
you know, but then when I finally got a chance to go out there and see like that, it was, it's pretty hard out there, you know, then I realized, okay, like, yeah, we do have to give back, especially if we have it to people that's, you know, less in need. So when I start seeing that, then I start understanding like, okay, yeah, if I have it, why not? You know what I'm saying? No, and it's great. A great thing that you're doing out here. Salute to you for giving back and caring about the people out here. What is the level up for 2022? Just to be on every newspaper, every TV, everywhere around the world, you know, turn our records to the world, you know, just do as much as I can possible to be the best I possibly can be. You know, we ain't done doing no mediocre shit, no average shit, you know. That's just you got that right. The, um, the motto. Anything else? Truly, anything else that you got to mention? Oh, yeah, I see that you um, you um, you do sports too, man. So what's up with your sports, man? What's your what's your favorite team, man? Uh, I'm a Mets fan, but I'm wearing the LA gear because you're out in LA, so I figured it would oh, make okay, you feel man. at home. Yeah, I'm a Mets no, fan. I'm, I'm so, uh, a Nets fan. Mets, Mets. I'm talking about basketball. You watch basketball? basketball? I'm a Knicks fan, unfortunately. Knicks, Knicks, Knicks. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? You a Laker fan? Clippers? No, I'm not a Laker fan. I'm a Clipper fan. Clipper. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's yeah, unique. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a Laker fan, but it, it's crazy because my favorite player is LeBron. So it's like, you know, it was kind of tough him going to Lakers because I wasn't a Laker fan. But it's like, you know, you're building your legacy. Do what you do. Yeah. Um, LeBron, do you, is LeBron is LeBron better than Jordan? LeBron is the best player in the world. You think right? so? Oh, you're part of that crowd. No, it's just I feel like I play basketball. So I'm when I, I feel like a lot of Laker fans, which is Kobe fans, they don't really speak facts into what they're saying. Cause he, me and Julius have the same debate too. He's a Jordan fan. And, and I feel like everything, every time LeBron James accomplished something is just more hate that comes with it. Cause first it was, okay, he could never be Kobe. He has no rings. Then it's okay. He has one ring. That's not enough. And he has two rings. That's not enough. He has three rings. is not enough. Four rings is not enough. Then it's like, then when he is going to get that fifth ring, then it's going to be like, okay, what you're going to say after that? Because, Stats wise, he has passed everybody's stats. Everybody's stats. He's the only player that got ten thousand rebounds plus ten thousand assists, and and that the points he has going to have, and he's going to be number one on the on the point board. So, if in the beginning we're talking about stats and he's surpasses everybody's stats, then what else can you possibly say? The stats is there. So, um, I don't know. I'm I'm my like I said, I'm I'm different. Like I like watching all around basketball. Like just not somebody that can score. I want somebody that that that's going to play both sides 100%. That's going to chase down and block you, steal the ball, do all that, not just, oh, I'm just going to score. Anybody can just shoot the ball every time. Like me watching Jimmy Butler yesterday. He's a great all-around player. He's going to play 100% through the whole game, offense and defense. He's out there running, stealing, blocking, doing everything. So, like, with that being said, I feel like my top five, no order would be as in, like, all around players would be LeBron. I feel like people don't throw Shaq in there enough. And Shaq is a dominant player. Like for him to not be able to shoot at all and average 30 something points, that shit is not like, you know what I'm saying? He could even make a free throw, let no. him on a three. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So him doing that. So I say Shaq, um, LeBron, T-Mac was my favorite player before. Grady. Uh, yeah, before uh, um, LeBron. So T-Mac, Shaq, LeBron, Kobe, MJ. Mm. You know what I'm saying? No order. They all great players. That's a nasty top five. I'll, I'll tell yeah. you what, you mentioned Jimmy Butler. If he makes that three-pointer last night, whole different game. Yeah, man. I literally was watching that game. I bet on Miami, and I literally was like, I know everybody was like, why did he shoot that? Because he could have took it in and definitely tied the game because it was like a three-on-one kind of, kind of break or three-on-two. But, you know, I didn't see him hit a three all that game, so – you know, like you said, they said the sports announcer said if you would made it, you would have been a hero. But I just feel like it was tough because I, he looked the same as when he played the Lakers in a bubble and how he was doing everything by himself, scoring 40 a game. You can't do that. No. And not 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 in that, you know, like because it's like you got people that's going to miss all them other players that he had. They should have played way better than that. Kyle Lowry should have played better. Victor Oladipo used to be a superstar. He should have played better. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can't beat a team by scoring 40 if all their other players have 20, 25, 15. You know what I'm saying? You can't beat, can't beat nobody like that. LeBron tried to do it in the early Cavaliers. You can't do that. If you're scoring 40 and your other players are scoring 10 points, 12 points, 
and you got Marcus Smart scoring 20 points, Jalen Brown scoring 26, Tatum scoring 20, Alfred scoring 15, 20, and people off the bench scoring 50. Like, you, know, you can't win that. But that's going to be a tough series with the Warriors because they both got great shooters, great bench players. So that's going to be a good a good matchup. Who, who do you have your money on? Who, who do you think is going to win that? I feel like the Warriors are going to win, but yeah, I wouldn't mind I'll, seeing the Celtics win. Yeah, the Celtics haven't won one, so I, I, that'll be that'll be a sneak, a sneak, a sneak championship. But I just feel like it'll be kind of tough, like like you said, the matchups. Because Marcus Smart, even though he you know he's not really an offensive player like that, but he scores a lot of points and he plays good defense. So, and he's bigger than Curry. So it's like if he guards, if Curry guards him, is going to be you know, then Tatum, you know, it's a lot of like different Mitch matches. Like, you know, I feel like more people need to go at Draymond Green. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like if I was on the court with Draymond Green, we would be both getting teched out the game because, you know, like he's a high head and like y'all players need to be attacking that. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, like even when Djokovic, whatever to do for the Nuggets, how do you have, how are you an MVP and you got Draymond Green guarding you? You should be killing that guy. You know what I'm saying? But, you know. It is what it is. It is. And with the LeBron arguments, you know, I've, I've backed off that in, in recent years because I used to be tough on LeBron. But mm-hmm. because I'm a Knicks fan, I don't like the Nets because all of a sudden KD and Kyrie go there. Yeah, to me, exactly. I think KD should be getting more criticism than LeBron does. He should have more hate because talk about a guy that's had to go everywhere to win an easy ring. Give me he, a break. He went to the Warriors and got an easy ring and left and then went to the Nets to play with Kyrie. And then like now Kyrie has admitted that he was wrong for what the situation with LeBron. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like wanted to leave and see he now he see how hard it is. And like you said, KD is getting a lot of criticism right now because it's like, man, you had James Harden, KD, and Kyrie Irving. Like what, who else you need over there? You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like it's bad coaching over there. Because, yeah, like, when Nash. I watched that series and they had Blake Griffin sitting on the bench, like, the whole game, I'm like, what are y'all doing? This dude could play defense. He could get rebounds. Y'all getting out rebound. That's how y'all losing. So it was just terrible coaching over there. I was like, what are you guys doing? This is terrible. Yeah. But I think what, what really ruins Katie's legacy, despite going to Golden State to get the quick ring when he didn't even need to do that, was the fact that he was up 3-1 to one against the Warriors when he was on the Thunder. And then the yeah. next year, he's like, oh, can't beat him, join him. That yeah, forever yeah, for me, yeah. KD will never be a top player in my book. Yeah, that, that's, that. What, that's why Westbrook was so mad at him. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And then I feel like these people be doing too much sneaky shit. It's like, if we play on the same team and you my boy, shit, man, let a nigga know that you're getting out of there. So at least we could try to, you know, finesse the situation and get another player. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, y'all, these niggas be like, oh, yeah, just in their sleep getting traded. Like, you know what I'm saying? Let them. Let your boy know that you out of there. Yeah, maybe that's 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 sick though. They'll have a nigga thinking that they're gonna stay there the whole time, and draft day come, they gone. <laughs> like, <that's crazy. laughs> I agree, man. But I I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a great series. It's gonna be a competition. I hope that the Celtics really put up a fight here. I'd like to see Boston win one, and, and that's rare coming from a Knicks fan because New Yorkers we don't like Boston teams. But to to be honest, I'm I'm. Through seeing the Warriors win yeah, all the championships. Yeah, see all these championships, these <laughs> easy championships. They about to, what, Curry got three already, right? Well, yeah. He's got three? He's got, I think he's got two or three. Yeah, he's got three. Yeah, because they said he they, he'd been to the final, the last 10 years, he'd been to the final six or seven times. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, yeah. That means you have four rings. That's crazy. Oh, it's starting to get like Tom Brady. Can't have yeah, that happen. <laughs> uh, Brady, man, that's, yeah, that's, that's sick. Who's your football team? I'm a Jets fan. See, I was a Chiefs fan. I really just like I like I like playing Madden. So I really just like whatever team I'm really playing with on Madden, that's my team. So I was a Chiefs fan. And then it's like, man, they just let everybody go. You let you let you I don't Tyreek Hill you, went to the Dolphins. Yeah. It's like you let the Honey, the honey Badger. badger. Yeah, he go to. And then I was a I was a I'm an Aaron Rodgers fan too. Then you let Adams go to. Yeah, he went to the like, Raiders. It's like, what are you guys doing over there? Like, you, uh, at this point, y'all just trying to help other people. With, when, and then Aaron Donald, he retired. That was, that was, that was, I didn't never guess that. Yeah. And I hope Kaepernick gets picked up by the Raiders there. Yeah. But it's like, I feel like he needs to go to a team that doesn't have a quarterback so he can actually play. Because Raiders have a fucking number, a start, their starting quarterback. They're, they're not going to let, let Kaepernick 
start no games. You know, he might play in a preseason, you know, but put him on a team like that actually need a quarterback, you know? The Lions. Yeah, Lions. Uh, I think that, uh, well, Patrick still got Cam Newton, but shit, him and Cam Newton could fight for that spot. You know what I'm saying? They could. Yeah, so. Seahawks. Yeah, Seahawks. Yeah, they let, uh, yeah, I never, I never thought they let Wilson go either. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. there's some crazy trades and, and moves this offseason. Yeah, definitely. Unbelievable, man. How about baseball? Are you a baseball guy? I'm, I don't really watch baseball, but I like, I like the Phillies. Your Phillies, oh, that's rivals with the Mets right there. Yeah, but I'm never like I never like really just sat there and watched a baseball game like that. But you know, so I definitely will probably should start trying to do that. Watch at least some baseball, like you know, because that's people like I like to bet. So betting on baseball, you know, that'd be good money. Yeah. So you know, the, the Phillies, I know the Mets swept them this weekend, but you have you have some great bats over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Bryce Harper, Castellanos. Schwarber. Yeah, definitely. You go to the games down there? I go to some Mets games. Yeah. I've been to a couple. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So Yeah, man. Yeah, man, man. So hope you enjoy your you got some barbecue. Hope you enjoy your day, man. Yeah, I had a cookout earlier, just enjoying the holiday weekend here. And you know, then it's back to life. Yeah, back as to, it always is. Back to the grind. Back to the grind, man. Tomorrow's Tuesday. Start a late week starting, you know, back to the grind. Yeah, you're gonna be recording some songs this week too. I'm assuming. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Somebody just actually sent me a, a, some beats just now too. Oh, that's big time. So, is this a big time producer too? Yeah, his name's Ace Face. I actually mm-hmm. went to school with him in like middle school, and I actually just did this other song. He sent me this hard beat. Let me see if I play it. Like, then I added like a little intro on it. You can see that, right? I'm legally blind. I can see barely. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like once I once I get into that zone, man, it'd be it'd be it'd be a rap, man. So we're gonna we're gonna be seeing more of me for sure, for sure though. Are you someone that freestyles your lyrics or do you write the, write it down? Yeah, because, like so yeah. like so what we'll do is we'll get to the studio, we'll get some vibes, we'll play it. And then once we play it, I go in there. And then some of the lines I could like, you know, um, I could piece them together. Some of the lines I just go right there and say it and double take it and do it again. Like, you know, so that's how it is. I like going in there, making a hook and then doing a verse. And then sometimes depending on if I want to finish the song, I will come back later and finish the song. Cause I don't like to seem like I'm forced or something. Cause then that's when you like mess lyrics up and stuff like that. So. Yeah. And that's, that's the authentic way to do it too. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes, like, if I hear a beat, like, somebody send me a beat, I'll sit here and I'll try to, like, do write something to the beat, like, write at least a, a, a hook to the beat, and then I'll get to the studio, and then I'll go from there. And then sometimes I'll scratch that or just do it again right there. So, yeah, it's definitely, definitely dope. Yeah. Trilly, man, anything else? I think we covered everything. We got the sports talk in. We got your, your new record in, All Booty. You could go check that out on all platforms. And... You know, we'll be looking out here. I got a trillion. They can follow you on Instagram and Twitter. I got a yes, trillion. Sir. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for uh, for the time and interview, bro. No doubt, man. A- anytime that you need any promo, just let me know. I know Julius got has us linked already. So anytime that you need any promo, just let me know. And we'll get right, an interview you, going here. All right. Of Enjoy course, holidays, man. Bro. You, you too, man. Enjoy the rest of your night. Take care. Stay safe, all right? All right. You too. Yeah. All right. Peace out, man.